Wow, I can't believe this. I was headed towards the beach so I could get a glimpse of the sunset after promising myself that I would the first chance I got. But instead, because of a sign offering free parking, I made it right and now here I am. At a location that looks like a desert land. Well, since I'm already here, I might as well look around and explore the premises. I've always been told never to judge a book by its cover. Who am I to judge any place after being away from home all these years in the belly of the beast, in the hole, in other words, in prison? I made a great choice by walking down to the mouth of the river. I never thought I would have the opportunity to walk down to a river again and enjoy its thousands of living organisms. Wait, is that a crab I just saw rushing to hide behind a rock? As if playing tag and go seek. <laughs> Don't worry, little buddy. I'm not out to hurt you. Those days are over for me. Yeah, there was a time when I would have cornered you and battled you. You snapping with your claws and I poking you with a stick. Tagging, snaps and pokes. Man, I used to make you mad and grouchy, didn't I? Then I had the nerve to call you a hermit. You know what? Hermit? I began to pick and mistreat people in the same way I used to do you. Until I had to mind somebody. Meaning that I ended up meeting my match. So now it's all about respect for everyone and everything. Well, as much peace and tranquility this small piece of area brings me, I must move and tag along with the floor of the universe. You have a very pleasant day, Mr. Krabby. I walked a great distance. And it seems like I'm in the middle of nowhere now. Well, well, well. Just look at what we have here. A single yellow flower growing out here all by itself. Wait a minute. Let's observe this little yellow miracle just a bit more closely. Is this solitude of hers designed intentionally or by accident? Is this flower put out here to suffer on her own with no other flowers to accompany her? Or is she put out here to be spoiled with all the tag-teaming attention of the bees and little bugs that are landing on her? Maybe she's designed to be the water well in the Middle Eastern desert. She certainly is nourishing the population that needs her. Well done, Miss Yellow Delight. You enjoy nature's hugs and kisses, okay? Delighted to make your acquaintance. Damn, I'm exhausted. But I'm almost at the end of the bike trail. Oh, there's a great blue herring at the end of the marsh. I wonder what he's doing there all by himself. Perhaps waiting to get hungry so he can dive into the river for his next meal. Interesting how behind him on the ridge pillars is a colorful tag piece of one of the local graffiti artists. From here, the heron looks like the star of his own show, waiting for the right moment to perform. No need to perform today, sir. You're already the symbol of self-reliance and self-determination. Well, time is limited, Herman the Great. I cannot wait with you. I must keep progressing and evolving. Nature requires. So I'll see you on your next show. Okay, great one. A hidden skateboard arena is tucked away almost like a secret society. I wonder if this is the place where all the famous skateboarders come to skate. I never thought that the most famous skater that ever skated would end up put away for life. It saddens me that the first thing that comes to mind when entering the skateboard arena for the first time is a story in my mind. Not the tags that I was hoping to see, you know, like stickers, tags on the skateboards, the tattoo tags on riders, the graffiti tagging on the walls, I better get out of here. I was having such a good day until I stepped in here. Ah, I'm at the beach at last. Submerged with the woman who tried to drown me. Yes, you thought I forgot, didn't you? I submerged myself with you and you carried me away with your gentle, unnoticeable riptides and wouldn't let me swim back to shore. Do you remember that? Although it was the most horrifying experience in my entire life, it was most appreciated. Afterwards, I took that near-drowning experience as a rebirth. It humbled me. You see, many go through life trying to find love and leave this earth without ever finding it. 
Many go to their deathbeds never to come back and tell us what they saw or experienced. I can honestly say now that I've experienced both. I've experienced love at its ultimate, and now I've also danced with death at its threshold. Tell me now, how blessed am I? Step out of the water. Everybody, out of water. Wait, what is that I hear? Everyone, it's time to go. If you don't have a boogie board, please get out of the water. Lifeguards are going home now. We will be back tomorrow. Please get out of the water. You may not have a boogie board. Thank you. Well, there you have it. You don't need to be tagged to be marked. It's been such a beautiful day. Miss Ocean, thank you for cooling me off and treating me so warmly and wonderfully. Love you so much. That was a long bus ride to the world's famous dangerous San Diego River. Hopefully we can get back home before our parents find out that we snuck out. Well, we find unless we don't get into a tag or tangle. Look at the water down there. It looks murky. And with a little bit of rain, we'll get tangled in the tweeds or swept out to sea. What do you mean swept out to sea? The water looks calm to me. This place is dangerous because of the people around it. Do you hear those screams out in the distance? As long as we don't get kidnapped, we'll get back home on time. Terrifying. That's SeaWorld, bro. They're screaming on a roller coaster. This place doesn't even look dangerous like that. But look there. See the shark fin in the water? That's what we need to be worried about. That is dangerous. Don't go near the water. A shark fin, she says. <laughs> That's a bird. Look closer. It has those long legs. It must have gotten separated from the other birds. It looks like there's something attached to its legs. Wanna go down there and try to free it? Sure, let's go. Wait, Sydney, you see those beer bottles? I told you, only the unkind hang out here. This place is dangerous. Be on the lookout for them. Bro, those are next to the recycling bin. <laughs> they fell out. You'd be paranoid. What we need to be concerned about is that chicory from off the ocean. It's cold out here. I don't feel it. Look, gang graffiti. How would that get there if they weren't here? We'll look a little closer at them. It says, hug life. How menacing can that be? You know what, Sydney? Now that you pointed all this out, this place is not as menacing as I thought it once was. Of course not. Only just imaginary tags you placed upon it. I like that word. Imaginary tags like labels. This place reminds me of a story my grandfather told me about a mighty river that served as a gatekeeper for a mighty land. The time before this was our home. Ah, like this over here is a gatekeeper to a mighty land. Yes, exactly. Did you know that the mouth of the San Diego River is a guardian to a mighty land that is native home to a mighty people? Wow, that's fascinating, Evan. Did Grandpa teach you this? Yes. He told me the story of an ancient tribal leader who stood sentinel at the mouth of the river and had command over all nature around. The birds, the bees, the trees, and even the worms. I can see that. Like that man down there with the smoke. He's surrounded by dogs and butterflies are circling him. I think that's him. Imagine your story. Yes, it is. Let's go down there and see if he'll talk to us. Okay. How'd he get across that water? I'm not sure. Should we call him? Okay, I'll do it. Hey, mister! Mister! How'd you get over there? The ground's shaking. Watch out for those stones. The water's rising? Run! Where did everything go? The, the bridge, the park, it's all gone. Look, Evan, look at the water. It looks so full and peaceful and beautiful. Sydney, how are we gonna get back home now? Evan, I'm not sure we have a home to go back to. You mean we won't be able to get back to North Park without a bus? Us? No, I mean, I think we've gone back in time to a place where this wasn't a home. I think Grandpa's story. Sydney, don't tag it that way. You're scaring me. Tagging what? Before we were just labeling this place for what we thought it was and not for what it actually is. This place is beautiful and full of nature. Not scary at all. My thoughts exactly. But do you know what is scary? Not having a home to go back to. We don't know that yet until we follow the river and see if we can find our way home. How'd you get so brave, Sydney? Like Grandpa told me, home is where you make it and not where someone else makes it for you.
So much life abounded among the wind and sea in harmony with earthly things. Why is it my despair is in constant agitation like the stormy seas ready to capsize mighty ships? I angrily remember how I need to always be more than what I was. What I was told I could be, what I told myself I was, not just only. Birds flocking to the still waters and ducks wading to and from the gentle streams tagged by nature inherently sent. I too come to these waters, stillness of the water and the gentle breeze billowing among the gentle waves it creates. I am reminded of the stillness I must reach, for the angry mind carries a heavy bind. The mighty ocean waters do not remain still, though. They eject mass destruction and impend a fear beyond understanding. Nature tags us to seek and embrace rage and revenge, for she too seeks to expel a force far mightier than our conception of force. So I sit and I listen. The wind coaxes the sea to obstruct its natural flow. There is disordered among the very ordered existence nature has been tagged to represent what we must learn. For the elements, they wash away the worries. Remind me of the journey that one must take when wandering through the murky waters we call the streams of life. Disrespected yet dependent on, disregarded yet subsequently always there to check upon. A maladaptive existence that left me starved for the decency I never knew could be for me. Tagged with a deception, the deception that my place and my purpose was to take the abuse of unworthy mouths. Deceptively under the spell of superfluous superiority. That up until this point, my worth and the existence I carried out was displayed to little importance, a veil to a nuisance. My voice and my wants were never set to a standard worth mentioning. Then why the despair? Why the agitation? What is it that feels empty even though it has never felt whole? Confusion leads me to seek, to understand the complexities my own mind endures absent of the terrors. The roar of the ocean with the gentle stream evolving into the river. With such a capacity to be engulfed and enraged, the gentle lands which merge the two waterscapes leaves me with the intense notion that there is harmony in the unruled. There was never the right way. I could never be anything more than what I am at this moment. The wading waters and softly rippled waves do so without permission, without judgment or even a doubt. I continue to move within myself in tandem with the mighty and still waters of the river. So you're saying that 
all these beautiful people out here are actually homeless. I know you were looking for a much rosier story. Those were on the other side, over there by Rob Field. Over here, it's smiles in the daytime, grief at nightfall. Are you serious? Yeah. Why you choose a story on the San Diego River anyway? Also, I'm Joe. I'm Mark. And actually, you've really got my attention now. I know about the homeless situation, and I want to help. Do your story on this side. Maybe you should consider a horror story. Make that a homeless horror story. What do you mean you want to help? How? Everyone says they want to help. They come out, do a few photo ops, and they forget about us as long as it's no longer news or vote worthy. I'll tell you what, Joe. Come over to the other side, over by Rob Field with me for a little while, and afterwards allow me to buy you some lunch. I'll explain everything to you. What do you say? You a politician? No. I'm from the Rivers and Humanity Foundation. And we're not just here for the river. We're here for the people, too. Why do you ask? Because never say no to free food is a proverb I live by. The only exceptions I make are for sleazebag politicians. You don't sound like one of them now. A proverb? It's not exactly a proverb, but I do live by it. Well, that's fine. At the Rivers and Humanity Foundation, we live by making sure that the rivers and the people around them are living in harmony and that both are doing all right. This homeless situation must be addressed. It's a tragedy. You may be able to help. When I look around here at all the fun these people are having, and then I think about what some of you guys are going through on the other side, it really hurts my heart. Yeah, I feel you. For me, it hurts my stomach, too. You mean it makes you sick to your stomach? No, I mean some days it's hard just getting food. We shelter in the old RVs, but food, medicine, stuff like that, that can get hard to come by at times. It's great to see so many people doing good and enjoying themselves but it's just really hard for some of us. Where some people fish for fun, we actually fish to eat. Joe, you're really passionate and you seem to have a great grasp of the problem. I deal with it. Live it, that is daily. Some days are tougher than others. I'm hungry, but I see kids who are hungrier and it melts my heart, so give them what I have. Pray something else comes through. We want to form an advisory board with some people close to the issues, Joe. Would you consider joining that advisory board? <laughs> in order to help, we need to know what help is needed, and the people affected by this problem are in the best position to tell us that. Oh my goodness. You're not some sleazeball. People come, ask us questions here and there, but never anything as impactful and inclusive as this. Thank you. Thank you. Joe, if I'm hearing right, that's a yes. <laughs> now let's go eat and get to work. Water, why are you doing that? Doing what? You know, going in circles like you don't know your way. I know my way. Sure couldn't tell that by the way you keep doing those loopy loops. You're making me dizzy. It's a game we play. It's fun. You know that's not allowed. Hasn't anyone taught you the process? I know. You follow the path of the ancestor's trek. You never deviate from the path. Our existence depends on each one's youthfulness. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. You dishonor our walk and your ancestors' creed. We 
have existed for thousands of years because we honor the process and complete the trek. I didn't mean to dishonor anyone, Rock. That's right. I'm Rock, which means I've been in this river for many years and I understand the importance of the process. I'm in the mouth now and my journey will soon be complete. You must finish your trek and leave the mouth so the river lives on. Well, I was just playing a game. When we see a rock that we like, we circle it to show it that it's the one we chose. We call it tag, you know, a game. The ancestor's trek is no place for games. You're warned, move along. Oh, I'm sorry, Rock. I didn't realize it was you. What are you still doing here? Why haven't you completed your journey? All right, all right, you know how it is. Go ahead, spit it out. I got lost and kind of sort of started playing again. You don't think the trek is serious, do you? Look at you, discolored and playful. I've seen things change, you know, once long before you were. The waters that took this walk were so pristine, focused, intent, purposeful. They're glide, graceful, and elegant. My ancestors, you knew them? How? I am the foundation of this river. I am rock. Our walk is slow, but we have just as much purpose as any other element. I've seen the stars walk in many circles, the moon dance. I felt the fall of hikers' boots, fishing hooks, and lost mementos. I've watched the birds fish, people swim, boats dock, and the banks shrink. So tell me why it ends. Why do I have to end? It doesn't end. It's an ongoing cycle. It begins in the Julian Mountains where I was born and flows to this mouth where the trek ends. That's why I end as well, right? Is that why you're playing tag? You don't want to finish your trek? You're afraid it'll be the end of you? I just want to keep living and playing. You don't trust your ancestors to lead you through your journey. How shameful. Me and my friends, we vow to never leave this river. We vow to live. To continue to play tag. We'll go in circles for 100 years if we have to. I ain't afraid. I just like to play tag. Oh, very windy today, isn't it? That storm set me back by 200 years. I'll have to wait for this land to waste away before I can reach the ocean. Well, I can give you a lift if you like. No, no. I won't dishonor the trek. Hello, Rock. What are you still doing here? You should have completed your trek months ago. I've been playing tag. You should see how many rocks there are here. I've met them all, I think. Still afraid, I see. Do you realize that the Cuyamaca Mountains where you were born depend on you for their existence? When you don't finish your trek, you ensure that the river will die one day. But I wasn't born in the mountains. I'm from Forester Creek, born in a tributary that comes from factories. I'm not fresh. By staying here, you're missing out on the chance to be refreshed. Once you leave the mouth of the river, you'll evaporate and become rainwater. You'll nourish the mountains where we originated and give life to so many things. It's true. I met a lot of your ancestors up there on their journey to be refreshed. Even those who come from tributaries, they are joyous over the chance to start over as fresh water. <laughs> really? This is why you must honor the process and finish the trek. Not just for yourself, but everything that will come after you. I can't believe it. I get to be fresh water. You should get going then. Yeah, yeah. I gotta finish my trek. See you on your next journey, friend. Okay, Rock. Tag, you're it. <laughs>